Savior, welcome back. I'm going to bring you a word now and we're looking at the Father Heart of God and part 17. And today it's simply called Father's Gift of Grace. Father's Gift of Grace, if you're taking notes. We're looking at 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, and verses 7 through 10. And this is what 2 Corinthians says. Paul says this, even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God, so to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Beloved, in my life, I have been through so many trials, so many different trials. And quite often when I go through a trial, I am brought to my knees. I am brought right down to my knees simply because I know that I can't progress. I can't move forward. I can't do anything without Christ because it's impossible. Because what I am facing, it is impossible for me to get through that without Christ. And that is something that I recognize in Paul right now. That is something that I always do, and that is I boast in my weakness. Because when I am weak, then I am strong. I know this. I know this in my own life. Paul says that he received, so to keep Paul, so to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Now, we don't know what that thorn in Paul's flesh was. We have no idea. We don't know if it was a sickness. We don't know if it was an infirmity. We don't know it was something that kept on bugging him. We have no idea. We don't know if it was a temptation, but that doesn't matter. What matters is what Paul says about that thorn in his flesh. And he said to the Lord, Lord, take it away from me. I don't want this anymore. Take it away from me. I pray, please take it away from me. He's begging three times. And the Lord just simply said to him, my grace is sufficient for you. My unmerited favor upon your life is sufficient for you. That's incredible. I want you to stop and think right now about a hardship, about a trial that you're going through, something in your life that is so devastating to you, you don't know what to do. That time in your life when you were brought to your knees. That time, perhaps, when you were homeless and had nowhere to live. That time, perhaps, when you lost your job suddenly. One day it was there, the next it was gone. And suddenly your income has gone. That time when there was a knock on the door and it was someone that you didn't want to see. And that visit brought devastation to you and your family. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. I want to make you an offer right now. That problem that you went through, 
that problem that you're going through right now, that trial that you're facing, that pain that you're going through, that illness that you're looking into the abyss to, whatever it is, that hardship, that mental torture, whatever it is, I'm going to say this to you now. Here's the deal. That is gone. It is over. That problem in your life is over. But the one thing that you're going to lose is God's grace. So you have either the trials that you're going through or you have God's grace. Just as Paul was faced with that. Three times I begged the Lord to take it away from me. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in your weakness. Now, if you had that offer on the plate right now, and I said to you, I can guarantee that that personal problem that you're going through will be taken away now, instantly, but you will lose God's grace in the process. God's grace will no longer be there. God's unmerited favor upon your life will no longer be a part of your life because you have chosen that road and that route to get out of that problem. What would your answer be? I know my answer would be every day and twice on Sundays, I would say, nope. I'll go through those trials. I'll go through that torment. I'll go through that pain. I'll go through all of that as long as I know that I have God's grace. As long as I know that God's unmerited favor upon my life is right there. Because I can't live without it. Because as Paul says, Jesus said to him very clearly, when he is weak, he is strong. Look, right here it says, That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults and hardships and persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You see, when you are strong, when you're puffed up, when you're proud, when you're haughty, when you're these things, how can you possibly be strong in Christ? When you're strong and confident and arrogant like that, I believe that you're weak in Christ. But when you're weak and you're brought down to your knees, when you're weak and you're brought onto the floor, that, my beloved, is when you're really strong. Because the Lord Jesus Christ is right there. He is right beside you, going through all the pain and the hardship and the trouble that you face. He is there, going through it with you, as he is there, going through it with me. Every time I go through hardship and pain, the Lord Jesus is there, right beside me. It's wonderful to know that, because he is a glorious saviour, because he is my glorious Saviour. Say that after me. Because He is my glorious Saviour. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God, for your saving grace. Thank you for what you have done in our lives. And thank you, Father, that when we are weak, then we become strong. Why? Because of your amazing grace. And Lord, I give you the honor and I give you the glory and the power that is in your name. And I say, I love you, Lord. Is that not the truth? He is certainly greater. Listen, it's been wonderful having your company. I want to hear from you, especially if today was the day that you gave your heart to the Lord or you renewed your relationship with him, then all you've got to do is email me at this address, tv at worshipradio247.org and simply say this, it was me. 
and then myself and the team can pray for you. It would be great to see you next time on Worship TV. And all I can say is, may the Lord bless you, and indeed, may the Lord keep you. Bye-bye for now. Hi there. If you're looking for worship 24 hours a day whenever you want it, then look no further than right here. Worship Radio 247 is a 24-hour-a-day, 365-day-a-year internet radio station based in the UK but broadcasting worldwide on the internet. Many people are tuning in and being blessed by the broadcasts, and it's easy to find too. Simply connect to www worshipradio247.org and click on the appropriate link or even download the app for your smartphones or tablet devices and there you are. Worship Radio 247 at your fingertips whenever you want it and wherever you want it. Worship Radio 247 online worshipping God in spirit and in truth www.worshipradio247.org